dodge bullets, baby. Ah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. There it is. Doyle's got it. Eastgate steps into poker history. This is the greatest tournament in the world. Just 64 players remain. Yes! Oh! yes! Including a handful of top pros. Last play on show. Each highly decorated, but none have the one title every poker player covets most. Yes! Main event champion. Yes. Oh! The main event is unbelievably stressful. Oh! This is actually a harder accomplishment than player of the year. Most thought they'd never get a chance at the game's ultimate prize. The fields have gotten so big that it's kind of a crapshoot. But they've made it this far. Wow. When you get down to like around 100 players, you say, wow, oh, hold on. I really have a chance to win. And are in position to answer one of poker's biggest questions. Can a well-known famous pro win it? Yeah. Oh, sure. Absolutely. The final table is close. The dream of poker immortality is within reach. Day seven begins now. Welcome to the 40th Annual World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky along with Norman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran. And Norman, it's day seven, and the main event marathon is nearing its conclusion. I'm shipping this thing, baby. What was once a packed Rio poker room is now down to an elite 64, and it is an impressive field filled with familiar faces and top pros. Keep this thing going, man. I don't want it to end. Only one woman, Leo Margetts, remains in the hunt, while Dennis Phillips looks to be part of the November 9 for a second consecutive year. All right, here we go. But all eyes are on two men. You got all the chips. I don't have them all. Wow. I don't have them all. Chip leader Darvin Moon and the most feared player in the game, Phil Ivey. I respect you. Thank you. I appreciate it. The pros are everywhere, including at the featured table where bracelet winner Antonio Esfandiari resides. Antonio's got that bracelet in three World Series final tables, but this is uncharted territory for him in the big one. What's the farthest you made it in the main event? This. This. I've never made it past day two. Uh, That's pro Ryan Fair talking to Espan Diari, who's trying to make the most of this first deep main event run. And he will start this day in sixth place. Everyone chasing Darvin Moon, Billy Cop in second place, Phil Ivey in third. And in fourth place is Steve Beglider with a little more than twice the chip average of three million. And there is Beglider, a former executive at Bear Stearns. He works in private equity, and I am not a private equity fan. And he folds. Action on Antonio Esfandiari on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam. Ace Trey offsuit. He works in public entertainment. I like 35. that more. <laughs> A raise to 135000 from Antonio. Ian Tavelli folds. Action folds over to another accomplished pro here, James Aikenhead from London with Pocket Nines. Aikenhead, part of the London-based poker team called the Hit Squad. Sort of a younger Hendon mob. Well, then. And Aikenhead's going to move all in for his last million and a half. Antonio's thinking, darn, I was just raising with a weak ace. <laughs> All right, so action now on Hung Pham, an amateur with pocket tens. You can have whatever you like. I guess Antonio is a fan of T.I. T.I.? I thought that was a prolot original. <laughs> Hung Pham folds his pocket tens on Mark Ader now with Ace King. He's a financial advisor. Come on. And he's going to move in. all in. He has Aikenhead covered. With a real Slim Shady, please stand up. Now Antonio's channeling Eminem. Former chip leader Warren Zaki from South Africa in the big blind folds. I was only kidding, guys. Antonio lays it down, so Aikenhead at risk. And this is for almost all of Mark Ader's chips. I had one. Hold an ace, Antonio. Hold an ace. Pocket ten. Ten. Pocket ten. Aikenhead's going, he folded pocket tens? I am a lucky man. <laughs> so Ader trying to knock off Aikenhead. And here's the flop. Four, six, nine. Aikenhead hits a set of nines. Aikenhead on the way to a double up. Ader on the way to chip oblivion. Bam feeling like a genius for mucking pocket tens. All right, turn card now is a deuce. And Aikenhead will win it right there. Ader drawing dead. Aikenhead now just above chip average. Eight are now just above zero chips. He took a shot with Ace King and fails. Aikenhead with a good double up. It's the main event, boys. The main event. And there is nothing quite like it in the world. 
Norman, 6,494 players walked into the Rio Poker Room. Each hoped for poker glory, each dreamed they would be the one. As day seven begins, the dream is over for 99% of the field, yet hope continues for the remaining 64. Lon, the number 64 conjures up thoughts of March Madness, and just like the NCAA tournament, this main event has Cinderella stories, like chip leader Darvin Moon, and powerhouses, like Phil Ivey and Antonio Esfandiari. Sure, we'll see some bracket busters along the way, but mark my words, this is the year we'll see a couple of number one seeds at the final table. Well, Norman, perhaps a bracket buster in progress right now at an outer table. Prahlad Friedman moved all in pre-flop with king-queen offsuit for 840,000. He was called by the ace king of Bradley Craig in the big blind. No help to either on the flop. Craig was down to 400 chips on day one. Now the chance to knock off one of the top pros. Prahlad gets no help on the turn. Prahlad 20th at the 06 main event, running out of time. River card is a nine. That will do it. Bradley Craig wins the hand, and that's a wrap for Friedman in 2009. Prahlad's out, so it's time for me to pout. Will we hear him rap again? There's no doubt. Word to Phil Helmuth. Get him next year. One of the best in this small field out in 64th. One man who got them all last year, well, all but two. Dennis Phillips looking for a return ticket to the final table. He's watching on as table mate Joe Seabach is in a hand against Nick Maimoni after the river. Seabach very short stacked, being watched by his dad, Barry Greenstein. Joe checks the river. Maimoni checks back, and he shows ace-10 for a pair of aces with a 10 kicker and will take the pot. The 22-year-old gets the better of the 32-year-old. Joe with about 10 big blinds left. Barry giving Joe the same look my dad gave me when I told him I was getting married the second time. Another part of the room, more familiar rail birds. Mel and Pat Humphreys watching their man Phil Ivey in a hand against Chris Bach. Ivey leads with his ace. I've picked up a tell on Phil Ivey. When he's in the hand, you shouldn't be. <laughs> Chris Bach apparently has not learned that lesson, and he's going to bet 150000 on the turn. Ivy saying, you don't have a three, you don't have a nine. Who are you kidding, pal? Ivy makes the call with his ace in the hole. River card, seven of spades. Ivy gets the check mark. Neither player with a hand. Chris Bach still got a plan, though. He is not shy. He's going to bet 360000 Bach bets a little more than half the pot. A three beats Ivy, a nine beats Ivy. Virtually any pocket pair beats Ivy. This would be a great call with ace high. And his read is spot on with ace high makes the call. And Chris Box sees why Ivy's the best in the business. That's why I've been picking him to win every year since the Great War. My man certainly got the game, but that chant needs a little work. Ivy over seven million now. He finished one seat short of the 03 final table. At table two, a man who made the main event final table in 2000, Jeff Schulman, finished seventh that year. Right now he's watching on as the last woman standing, Leo Margetz is in a hand. From the big blind, she called with pocket fours after Grayson ramaged Rays with pocket eights. Andrew Lichtenberger also called with ace queen suited. And to the flop, these three go. The flop is... 10, Trey, 8, Ramage hits a set of 8s. Margetts almost drawing dead. She will check. Ramage and Lichtenberger both are 21, two of the eight players who still could become youngest main event champion ever. Ramage leads out for 200,000. Lichtenberger gives it up. How much are playing behind? The 1% hand maybe oh, with a misread here. Nine behind. Margetts just with pocket fours. Nice. Will raise it to 600,000. All in. Ramage shoves. I have to card. Her ill-timed raise now gives her pot odds she can't get away from, but she's not going to like the real odds. Margetts now in danger of losing about a third of her stack. She's going to need running fours. All right, turn card with Ramage looking to double up. It is a queen, and that will do it. Margetts drawing dead, and Ramage takes the pot. Margetts gave up over a million chips, but her pursuit of becoming just a second woman to reach the main event final table is still alive. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Ling's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend Game for your phone or iPhone. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Ling's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the Rio, winning that main event bracelet is a priceless moment. Plus, it comes with an eight and a half million dollar bonus. You and me. Oh, me, me and you. 
No matter how they They're still the singing dice. at the feature yeah, table, yeah, Norman. That was my uh, wedding song. The only one. My wedding yeah, song yeah. was Carry On My Wayward yeah, Son. Yeah. <laughs> Happy together. Well, they're singing our theme song, and they have the same look on their faces as we do. What, blissfully happy? Steve Beglider gives it up. Action over to Antonio Esfandiari. 8-9 offsuit. Antonio recently hired a life coach. He talks to him every morning. Antonio folds. Ryan Fair with King Queen off. Fair dropped out of dental school. Decided that dealing with bad beats was better than dealing with bad breath. <laughs> Fair raises to 125000 Action folds over to Warren Zaki, owner of a plumbing supply company in South Africa with Queen Jack offsuit. As a rule, plumbing supply guys always get the girl. He calls from the big blind. He'll go heads up with Ryan Fair. The flop seven, Queen four. The Queen hits both. Fair leads with his king kicker. Zaki doesn't look like the type of man who would wear his cap that way. He likes his queen. He bets 225000 more than half the pot. Fair has four previous World Series caches, all top 30 finishes. And he likes his queen also and calls. To the turn we go. It's a six. That changes nothing. Zaki putting together some chips. Less than half the pot. 350,000. Zaki thinks he has the best hand. Fair thinks he has the best hand. One of them, Lon, is wrong. Fair just makes the call. River card now. Tray of diamonds. Four to a straight on the board, but Fair earns the check mark with his better kicker. Zaki first to act. Five hundred. That's about a third of the pot. Zaki's let out three straight times, and now Fair's not so sure he's got the best hand. You look pretty nervous over there. I am. I've got a long flight back. I know. <laughs> well, this hand's pretty hard to lay down. Look quite nervous. Very nervous. Fair would be getting four to one here on a call. You show if I fold? Fair's not going to want to see it. Ryan lays it down. Zaki shows a second best hand. I, I guess he should have stayed in dental school. Wow, this event is hard enough to survive, and then Ryan Fair asking for more torture is beyond reason. So Warren Zaki will drag that pot of almost two million chips. Sir, I got a read on you. Careful. That's why you should never show your hand. Currently 57 players remain. Darvin Moon has three times the chip average leading the way. The next player out receives over 108,000. Big pot developing at the outer table. One-time chip leader Billy Kopp with a set of sixes against the straight and flush draws of John Martin. Martin bet a half million. Now Kopp raises to 2,325,000. Martin, a computer consultant from Southern California, semi bluffed at this pot, now facing a big re-raise. Now he comes over the top, all oh, in. Oh. And a call from Kopp. Martin oh, at risk with one card to come and behind. Martin decided to gamble, and he's on the brink of going home. Cop on the brink of becoming chip leader. Over six million in the pot, and the river card is a jack. Cop will win that huge pot. John Martin missed everything, knocked out in 57th place. A big main event moment. Cop regains the chip lead. Martin heading to the exit with a sandwich. Nice hand, Billy. Billy Cop nice with hand, another Billy. big knockout, propelling him over 11 million chips. He's the chip leader again. Cop's been making the most of knockouts here at the main event and hopes to make a name for himself in the process. I knocked out Joe Hashem and Peter Eastgate. Well, I'm the only person in the world that's ever knocked Peter Eastgate out of the main event. That's pretty cool. It was just really nice to be able to play with those guys and compete and being able to build chips by knocking these players out. Just can't look. To go further is just absolutely amazing. I'm a full-time student at the University of Kentucky. I'm actually like a six-year senior uh, due to playing poker. I want to finish and get my degree, but I'm only 23, and I think I'm going to go this route for a while. So it feels good to be going deep right now, and hopefully I can make it to the final nine. I'm here to win the bracelet, and I'm going to do everything possible to get first place. To paraphrase a line from Tommy Boy, a lot of people go to college for six years, but they're usually called doctors. <laughs> At another table, Joe Seabock pushed his remaining chips into the middle with ace nine off. Nick Maimoni called him with ace queen. Nice, I like it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say one time. Funny, my father said the same thing before my first marriage. But it would like a little nine on the flop. I can't recall my father ever saying that. <laughs> Seabock needing to come from behind. I don't want to say what I'm doing. The flop now. Trade jack six, nothing in there for Joe to get excited about. 
Seabox short stacked much of this main event, looking for that little nine. Third card is a four of spades, down to his last card. Nine. Barry Greenstein looking for a little nine. Joe needs that nine. The river card is a queen. Maimoni wins it with a pair of queens, knocking out Joe Seabock in 56th place. Barry, stop twittering and go hug your son. A great run for Joe Seabock here at the 09 main event. He and his dad should be very proud. The World Series of Poker. 40th Annual Memories. Chip Reese was the best overall player that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> In a poker game, no, there's no one ever better than him. Playing some strong poker over here, are we? He was the best poker player that I ever played against. Chip Reese has done it! For him to win the inaugural horse tournament just seems perfectly fitting. Chip Reese has been the best for a long time. Now everyone knows it. If the late Chip Reese is supplanted as the greatest player ever, it will likely be by Phil Ivey. But as you see on the FullTiltPoker.net tournament ticker, neither has won the big one. And while Ivey has the edge in the money department, Chip has come the closest to glory, finishing sixth in 1979. Phil Ivey trying to enrich himself further in this main event. He has Scott Citron at risk and way behind after the flop. Ace King versus Ace 10. Citron pushed pre-flop with 12 big blinds. Citron caught his 10, plus he's got a flush draw now. That's a pretty good card. Ivy now will need a non-hard king to knock Citron out. River card is another 10, and the 25-year-old poker pro from Milwaukee doubles up through Phil Ivy. Sounds like Scott has a nice cheering section. A bump in the road, my friend. Just a bump in the road. Ivy's still up for the day. Plenty of pros would love to see one of their own at the 40th annual main event final table. Back at the feature table, another pro has been overdue for a deep main event run, Antonio Espondiari. That song's stuck in my head now. You Looks like Antonio got a song stuck in Ian Tavelli's head. Now that I can't see me loving nobody. That was my wedding song, yeah. my first dance. Stuck in my head. No one at the table seems to care. That was Steve Beglider's wedding song. I'm interested, Steve. Action on Adam York, a 24-year-old poker pro from Bristol, England with Ace Jack. York graduated from Plymouth University. I believe they are the Raging Cajuns. He's going to raise it to 160000 York also the player that knocked out Nicole Pepe on day six. We have three Brits left in the main event. No Brit has ever won the big one. Here's another one from London, James Aikenhead with two Red Kings. Aikenhead started the day as one of the shorter stacks in the room. Aikenhead will re-raise to 435,000. How much do you have total? What behind? 1.5. Two Englishmen in the hand. Everything just sounds more civilized with a British accent. It's just a different vibe than when Mike the Mouth and the Poker Brat are talking. York decides just to make the call with his ace jack, so these two will go heads up. And the flop is for King Jack. Aikenhead hits his set of kings. Pair of jacks for York, and he checks. Aikenhead now with a hammer lock on his hand. Makes it 420,000. Aikenhead will not slow play it. Boy, that was a tall stack. Action back to York now. Well in. Cool. And an insta call from Aiken Head, and he looks headed for another double up. A very civilized check raise, a very civilized all in call, and now one of the civilized guys is going to kick the other civilized guy's butt. I want to sweat. No. <laughs> you stay out of this one, man. Aiken Head in boys. good shape. York needs running cards to knock out Aiken Head. Turn card. Seven of hearts, York cannot win it, drawing dead. James Aikenhead doubles up again. See no ugly American histrionics there, just a cup of tea and a big pot. So Adam York takes the hit, handing his chips to his fellow Brit James Aikenhead with a couple of double ups today. James Aikenhead over the chip average now. Back to table two, get ready for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card hand, where you at home and Norman try to figure out the concealed hole cards. Lon, I've just gotten word that I've been nominated for the Wild Card Hand Hall of Fame. I'll be the first one to vote for you. Seven tray off for Jeff Shulman. And he will raise it to 150,000. Shulman decides to mess around with one of the worst hands in poker. Looks like he has his bluffing shoes on. On the button, Jonathan Tamayo has the wild card hand. Tamayo went to Cornell. That's out of my league. 
23-year-old from Texas calls for 150000 From the button, I'm going to put him on suited connectors. Small blind Leo Margetz folds. Thank goodness we're not playing along with Margetz. I never know what women are thinking. The big blind folded, so heads up to Mayo and Shulman. The flop is Jack 10 Trey Shulman with a pair of trays. Bottom pair doesn't matter. What matters to Shulman is if he figures Tamayo has a hand he can bet him off of, so Shulman might go with a continuation bet here. Jeff is reaching for chips and puts together 225,000. There are flush and straight draw possibilities on that board. Tamayo makes the call. That call tells me Tamayo got a piece of that board. He might have a pair of tens. He might have a flush or straight draw. All right, the turn card. Queen of diamonds. Shulman adds a flush draw. Jeff can't like that card, though. He checks. Tamayo could have hit a flush or a straight. It would have been tough for Jeff to keep bluffing right there. Tamayo checks behind him. Lon, don't ask me what Tamayo has. I do not know. <laughs> That's your job. River card, nine of spades, four cards to a straight on board. This isn't about what Jeff has. He knows he's beat. It's about if Jeff thinks he can bluff Tamayo off his hand. I don't think he will. But Jeff is reaching for chips. I've been wrong before. With just a pair of trays, bets a half million. He's got some read on Tamayo and will take a stab at it. He's putting Tamayo on a pair, and he's trying to bet him off of it. I call. You got me. Jeff says, you got me. Tamayo turns over a king high straight. Jonathan actually had him the whole way. He flopped top pair. Well, Jeff was wrong on that hand. I wasn't right or wrong. I was just wandering about aimlessly. And that is par for the course on the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Jeff Schulman down under four million chips now to an outer table where one of the top pros is in action. Tom Schneider just moved all in. His two pair lead the flush draw of John Liu. Got it all in. Two pair against the flush draw. Tom laying out what's in front of him to his wife, Julie, on the rail. Lou, you may recall, bowls and owns a nail salon. One out of two ain't bad. Uh -huh. King of spades. <laughs> Julie actually did better at this year's World Series than Tom until the main event. Tom Schneider right here looking to dodge a heart. River card. King of spades. King of spades. Is that my baby? That's what you do. Stack them, stack them, stack them to the top. I guess divorce is an option for Tom, but this really shouldn't have gone past the second date. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Apology not accepted. There is a code of conduct in a card room, and a shrieking spouse is in direct violation of it. With that double up demand, they call the donkey bomber. Tom Schneider has nearly 4.7 million chips. Meanwhile, at another table, Dennis Phillips in not so good of shape, getting short on chips as pocket queens and flush draw trail the set of aces of Steve Sanders after the flop. Sanders owns several RV parks. This is his first World Series event ever. Dennis checked action to Sanders, bets 300,000. It's a sticky spot for Dennis Phillips. The ace alone might scare him. I'm all in. Check raise all in from Dennis. This would be for most of Sanders' chips. And of course, Dennis Phillips right now at risk. I call. He makes the call. Dennis Phillips at risk and needing help. Oh, Lord. Yeah, and now Dennis Phillips' hopes for back-to-back -back main event final tables are looking very dim. Sanders in position to knock out Dennis Phillips. Turn card now. Fourth spades, no help to Phillips. Dennis Phillips' amazing two-year run is one card from ending. Phillips needs a club, any club other than the four, or he is gone. The river card is the jack of clubs. Phillips' flush comes through. <laughs> Dennis living a charm, charmed life on that one. The truck horn should have honked several times. That hand leaves Steve Sanders crippled. <laughs> just got lucky. I just Nobody got lucky. makes the November 9 without catching a little luck, and Phillips' hopes are still alive. Wow. Welcome back to the Rio. 54 remain in the main event. We will be playing down to 27 here on day seven. Let's go to table two where Leo Marguez has been pretty quiet since doubling up Grayson Ramage. She looks down at 9-4, off suit, and folds. Marguez, the last woman standing in her first main event ever. Action on Eric Buckman, a 29-year-old poker pro from New York. 10-9 of clubs. Buckman made a final table earlier at this World Series. A raise to 140,000. Jeff Shulman now with ace, king of hearts. We saw Shulman try to bluff Tamayo previously, a departure from his tight play earlier in the main event. A re-raise from Shulman to a half million. There is Tamayo. 
with pocket queens in the big blind. Tamayo's nickname is Texas John because he's from Texas, unlike, say, Miami John, who's never even been to Miami. <laughs> all in. Tamayo comes over the top with his pocket queens all in. Buckman will be all out. He does fold. Now Shulman with ace king of hearts. This will be for most of Jeff Shulman's chips. The new age wonders out there almost always call with this. Shulman's going to think about it. Sorry, guys. Big decision. Shulman knows this would be, at best, a coin flip that could decide his main event. And Tamayo four bet it. He could even have pocket aces or pocket kings. Jonathan seemingly melting under the power of Shulman's glare. Looking for action? I think he's looking for a contact lens that he dropped in his navel. I'm wondering what answer would satisfy Shulman. Yes, no, maybe? Well, this is a big decision for Jeff Shulman. Does he want to gamble in this spot? No, he doesn't. He lays it down, and Tamayo wins it pre-flop with those queens. If Shulman calls there and wins that race, he's among the chip leaders, but he'll wait his turn. So Jonathan Tamayo getting the better of Jeff Shulman today. Tamayo with almost four million chips. Another player getting the better of everyone right now is chip leader Billy Kopp. He's up against former player of the year Tom Schneider after the turn. Kopp has put out a bet of 375,000 action on Schneider. You gotta love it, a six-year college senior against a former player of the year deep in the main event. This would be like one of those mid-majors against Kansas or Duke in the final four. Schneider called eight of hearts on the river. Kopp first to act, the chip leader Puts together 980,000. Cop has chips and is using them. Big riverbed into Tom Schneider. Schneider with his wife Julie watching his every move. Tom makes the call. Cop turns over. A King 10. He made a straight on the turn. And Tom Schneider took a big, big hit on that hand. Top gets stronger. Got shot on turn. Tom relaying the bad news to his wife, Julie, on the rail. That's OK. Don't even worry about it. That's a victory for the rest of us since we don't have to hear the Schneider shriek. And Cop has been on a tear all day. Gets the best of the man they call the donkey bomber. Not many donkeys left in this short main event field, but what is a donkey and where did this term come from? We investigate in this edition of The Nuts. Donkey in poker is like donkey in life, you know. Oh. A donkey in poker basically means the idiot at the table. Just being stubborn and not knowing that your hand is beat. I play like a donkey, I know. There are plenty of them out there. <laughs> if you don't know what a donkey is in poker, take a look in a mirror. I do not know how the term donkey came to be applied to poker players. I invented the term donkey. Me and Eric Lindgren, we came up with this word. It was never said, ever. You know, he plays like a donkey. <laughs> then there are some new words based on donkey where you say, well, a bunch of donks. I donkified that tournament. Uh, people say, oh, he donked off his chips. Oh, man. You can say that someone's donkey-licious. I see another donkey. I never call anybody a donkey, ever. Say who the donkey is at the end of the day, sir. Oh, God, they play so bad. We don't want to pin the tail on the actual donkey. But we need more animals, I think, though. It's just too much donkey and not enough antelope, you hippo, you, you labradoodle. <laughs> Better be and call the horse's ass. I've had the dubious distinction of being called a donkey and a horse's behind, and that's usually before I get out of bed. <laughs> Back to our featured table, four players going to the flop. Antonio Esfandiari raised with a six of diamonds. He was called by Ryan Fair, dealt pocket fours. Hung Pham with a suited ace queen, and Eugene Kachalov with king ten called from the blinds. This could be a horse race with a bunch of donkeys. <laughs> the flop. Nine Trey deuce misses everyone. Fair leads with his pocket fours. Fam missed it with ace queen. I've been playing poker line since the late 1930s, and that's the worst flop I've ever seen. Fam and catch a love check. Antonio Esfandiari with ace six. We'll take a stab with 420,000. Magician trying to pull a bluff out of his hat. Ryan Fair, pocket fours. How can he play? But he does lay down the best hand. Hung Fam now. Fam like Antonio, just with ace high. I'm all in. Check raise all in. Catch a lot, folks. Oh, I'm tired of you, Mr. Hung. It's called bluffing with the best hand. Fam squad douche has Antonio's squad douche right, squad dominated. 
You have a rocket, you can send me home. Or you can, I can double up. I don't want to double you. That'll hurt me. On every level. Financially, spiritually, mentally. But if I bust you, that would feel good. I don't have anything. That's the problem. All right. Antonio folds. I kind of like Antonio's floor show when he's beat and he's about to fold. I give it three and a half stars. I give Mr. Hung's sports coat three and a half stars as well. Mr. Hung. I love you, Mr. Hung. You cuckoo. Hung fam was the smart one on that hand. While Esfandiari leaks more chips, that's a bad pattern to be setting this late in the main event. Back at the Rio in the 2009 main event, we are inching closer to our final table. At the feature table, Antonio Esfandiari has not been able to get anything going today. He looks down at 7-4 off suit, and he folds. Lines are up to 30 and 60,000. Ryan Fair looks down at ace-10 of diamonds. I'm getting a lot of email asking me why I hate the ace so much. Hey, it's personal. Fair raises it to 150,000 with his suited ace. Now James Aikenhead. King of spades, queen of spades. Aikenhead used to be a commuter train driver in London. One time he thought he was driving a train of four cars. It actually was eight cars long. He didn't pull the train far enough onto the platform. And when he opened the doors, some people fell trying to get off of the train. Thankfully, no one was hurt badly. But that's why I take the bus. <laughs> Aikenhead called with a suited king queen. Here's a flop. Eight four queen. Aikenhead hits his pair of queens. Ryan Fair missed. He has ace high. But he's going to bet it, 255000 Fair with the continuation bet, also known as the uh, Dig Your Own Hole special. Just a smooth call from Aikenhead with top pair. Aikenhead content to let Fair do the heavy lifting. Turn card, deuce of spades. Fair gets no help. Aikenhead adds a flush draw. Fair bets 475000 tries again to buy it. When you're digging your own hole, it's, it's a good idea to use your legs when you're shoveling the dirt so you don't hurt your back. Fair's doing a pretty good job. <laughs> Aikenhead. Just calls again. Again, Aikenhead does not want to mess with Fair's handiwork. Aikenhead with a huge advantage going to the river. Five of spades, and Aikenhead gets better hitting his flush. Fair reaching again. With air, he bets 530000 That is one good-looking hole Fair has dug for himself. I hope it's wired for cable. Aikenhead confident with the second nut flush. Fair now is really, really tired from all that shoveling. Of course, he can't call. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He says, never mind, and lays it down. Aikenhead takes the pot from Ryan Fair. Good down. What a rush for James Aikenhead. He's really feeling it today, up over 5 million chips. But this is no surprise to James, because when he has a feeling, it seems to come true. I know, it sounds a bit crazy, but... Last year, before I got on the flight, I was like, I've got a really good feeling this year. I'm going to make a final table in the World Series. And Aikenhead wins the hand that deliver a blow to Chris Ferguson. And then this year, I just said to my friend, I'm going to go so deep in the main event. I get feelings now and again when I'm playing, and you just know that you're going to bust someone. I told my friends uh, exactly how many chips I'd finish each day on before the day started. It's quite funny. I told them I'd finish day three on 780,000, and I finished on 792. Day four, I said 1.7 million chips, and I finished on 1.596. On day five, I said 3 million, and I finished on 2.7, so here I am. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know where it comes from. Yeah, it's crazy. Aikenhead says Brits are catching up to American players in poker skill, and I think he's ahead of most of us. All right, let's go to the field. We head over to the man who was second in chips, Maryland logger Darvin Moon. He currently has another former big stack, Adam Bilzerian, all in after the flop. Bilzerian's queen 10 trailing the pocket nines of Moon. It's the man who renounces U.S. citizenship against the man who literally lives off the land of America. Turn card, and there's a 10 for Bilzerian. Moon now will need a nine to knock off Bilzerian. I hear the fat lady singing, my friend. River card is an eight. Bilzerian wins that hand and doubles up through Darvin Moon. Not a big hit to Darvin Moon's chip stack, but that was a big deal to Adam Bilzerian. He's still in this thing. But he still has a lot of work to do. His 1.8 million chips is just about half the chip average in the room, which stands at about 3.7 million right now. 
to another table. Tom Schneider in even worse shape. He's all in and behind. His eighth seven off trails the pocket nines of Mark McLaughlin. Julie Schneider looking on anxiously. McLaughlin, a 21-year-old student in Montreal. Oh, they're both going to have their hoods on for this hand. Schneider looking for help, not looking happy. Flop is 5-6 king. McLaughlin's nines are still in the lead. Someone say something, I can't see a thing. Flop. What a drag, being all in and being nagged by your wife. Hand's not over and it's a bad beat. Turn card now is a seven, that pair Schneider, but he needs more help. And Tom Cut, Schneider seven, needs an ace or a seven, seven or, or he eight. and Julie will be heading home. River card now. Ace. Will it be Schneider's last? Yes. It's another oh, King. Oh, McLaughlin oh, wins it oh. with a better two pair, knocking off Tom Schneider in 52nd place. That is it for the 2007 Player of the Year. Uh-oh. Is Julie Schneider going to slug Mark McLaughlin for knocking out her husband? Oh, it's just a hug. These people make me sick. Media player. So the 21-year-old student from Montreal collects the last of Schneider's chips. Another big name throw hits the dust. See you guys. A strong run here further solidifies Tom Schneider as one of the game's best. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the Rio, there's Bradley Craig now at table two. He's our chip in the chair guy who should have been out of here on day one. He's all in with ace king against the pocket kings of Jonathan Tamayo pre-flop. And Craig with that ace king called all in here with about 45 big blinds left. Flop five, queen six. Craig still trailing Tamayo's kings. Remember, Jeff Schulman got away from a similar spot with ace king against Tamayo. Tamayo four betted again here and Craig called all in. Turn card, four of hearts. Tamayo still leads. So our chip in the chair guy could be down to his last card. Craig needs an ace or he'll have no chips left. River card is a nine and that's gonna do it. Tamayo wins the hand. Bradley luck, Craig finally eliminated in 50th place. So Craig goes out and there go Craig's chips over to a now flush Jonathan Tamayo. Tamayo with almost eight million. You look very impressive also like this. Great run for Craig from almost out the door on day one to a payout of almost $139,000. He never gave up, and it paid off in a big way. Back to chip leader Billy Kopp, who was probably glad to get rid of former player of the year Tom Schneider, who was on his left, but taking Tom's seat, none other than Phil Ivey, the second biggest chip stack. Phil trying to knock out bracelet winner Blair Rodman, but Rodman with a set of sixes to lead Ivey's pocket nines. I'm good in these, I'm good in these situations. I know. Just so you know. Phil doubled up Blair Rodman on day six in the process of doing it again here on day seven. Oh, turn card. Ivy thought it was a nine, but just an eight. Ivy now can only knock out Blair Rodman with a river nine. River is a five. Rodman will win that hand and double up through Ivy again. Another bump in the road for my man, but sometimes those bumps can turn into potholes, and before you know it, the road has swallowed you up. My fan club. 10-40. Thank you. Seems like the Rodman contingent brought their A game. Maybe the Humphreys should take note. So Rodman should thank his benefactor, Phil Ivey, for that double up. Doesn't hurt Ivey too much. He's just under 10 million right now. There about the vein. So just re-raise you. So just raise you. Phil Bomoni, his pre-flop play. That's like Michelangelo second-guessing his color choice in the Sistine Chapel. Looking at the top chip stacks, the two biggest stacks are elbow to elbow out there. Jonathan Tamayo is charged up to fifth place. You notice Antonio Esfandiari has dropped out of the top ten and below the chip average of about four million. At this feature table, action is on Ryan Fair on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam. Two tens. Fair is starting a charity for cancer research in memory of his mother Jody, who passed away earlier this year. A raise from Fair to 150,000. Tavelli lays it down over to James Aikenhead. Small suited connectors into the muck. Aikenhead playing it snug. To the amateur Hung Pham. He's a chef at a family restaurant in Washington State with pocket kings. And a re-raise to 550,000. Two pretty big hands bumping into each other. Re-raise back to Ryan Fair now. I'm all in. He comes over the top, all in, all in for in. over two million. Fam Whoa. barely has Fair covered. Obviously, Fam can only be beaten by aces, but he might think Fair has aces. Fair has raised and re-raised from under the gun. My call. Fam it's makes the call ball. with his kings, and he'll put Ryan Fair on the edge of elimination. Oh wow! Slow roll. Fair not happy with Fam. 
Such a slow roll. Fair thinks Fam took too long in calling with his kings. Ryan is all in. So the two kings of Fam trying to knock out the two tens of Ryan Fair. Now the flop. And there's a 10 in the window for Fair. What a blow to Hung Fam. His main event hopes now flickering. Fam played the kings well, but runs into a set. Turn card now. Five of diamonds, Fair still ahead. Fam now needs a two-outer. Only a king would knock out Ryan Fair. And now the river card. It's a nine, and Ryan Fair will double up. Isn't that excessive celebration? I don't feel that bad. Fair still upset. I just think Fam might have thought he was up against aces. Fam crippled. I thought I might have been ahead for a second. I thought he might have had ace king. Ryan Fair thinking about his mom there. My mom just passed away. Did she? Sorry to hear that. That was for her. Yeah. Have fun, Stan. Fair keeping the memory of his mother alive as he looks to go further in this main event. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros. Welcome back to the Rio and the ever-shrinking main event. We're down to just 47 players. The chip average, just over 4.1 million. And this field may shrink even further. Adam Bilzerian all in with pocket tens, trailing the two kings of Joe Ward. All the chips went in pre-flop. Ward, a 27-year-old pro from Massachusetts. Bilzerian has to have a 10. Rivers a nine, and Bilzerian knocked out in 47th place. What a run for the flying Bilzerian brothers. Dan finished 180th, Adam finishes 47th. More money for the venture capitalists. Elsewhere, one of the big stacks, Steve Beglider, trying to get us closer to our final nine. He has Manuel Labandera dominated and at risk with the river card to come. Labandera needs a non-spade six. It is a six of clubs, and that's good enough for him to double up through Beglider. Beglider seems a bit dismayed. I got one of my two out. A huge array of emotions in this pressure cooker that is the main event. Well, there's one way to pay off your losing hand. Geez, you know, I had some of my money with Bear Stearns. When it all disappeared, I took it a little better than he just did. Egg glider steaming. We'll try to walk it off. Back to the feature table, which has seen its share of bad beats, too. Antonio Esfandiari with two pair after the flop, trying to finish off the amateur hung fam. Fam holding a pair of sixes. It was Ryan Fair who just crippled Fam with a bad beat hitting his set of tens. Good luck, sir. A turn card now with Fam at risk. Is another deuce. Espondiari with deuces full now. And now Hung Fam needs a two outer. Only a six for a better full house keeps him around. The river card is a five of hearts, Hung Fam knocked out in 46th place. Ryan Fair knocked Hung Fam down, and Antonio finished him off. A great showing for the amateur, wins almost $139,000. Antonio Esfandiari collects those chips, once again heading in the right direction. Out in the field, Dennis Phillips is putting his chips into action. Phillips re-raised to 450,000 pre-flop. Action is on Francois Baumiger. Baumiger, one of three French players still in the field. A Frenchman has never won the main event. I'm already in. All in. A call. And all in and a call. Phillips at risk shows ace king against the ace king of Baumiger, both suited. We're looking at a split pot unless one of the two makes a flush. And once again, we've seen a lot of chips go in pre-flop with Ace King. I don't want any flush. We just want to chop it, guys. I want to see a flush. Yeah, no, nah, we don't want to see a flush. I don't care. Ah, I'm Phillips just sure. wants a safe resolution. Flush. Everyone, take back his chips and let's move on. All right, let's see the flop now. Ace King versus Ace King. It is four Whoa. King six, Whoa. two spades for Balmajer and Phillips suddenly uneasy. Yeah, and now Dennis Phillips all in on a quest for back-to-back -back main event final tables. Has to fade a spade on the turn and the river. Dennis Phillips at risk. I like red cards. Turn card, that's a red card. One, one more red one. One down, one to go for Dennis to chop the pot. Anything red and I'm happy. But if Balmagier can hit a spade on the river, Dennis Phillips is gone. The river card. 
Oh, it's the spade! Dennis Phillips is gone! A brutal way to go out. That is gut-wrenching for Dennis Phillips. Wow. I'm out. To see his four million chips disappear like that. Dennis Phillips, extraordinary two-year main event run ends in unexpected fashion. No back-to-back final tables for Phillips, but he didn't miss by much. The players in the Rio poker room saluting Dennis Phillips. He bested over 13,000 players over two years and left an indelible impression on the World Series. Esfandiari has about 4.2 million midway through day seven. The blinds at 30 and 60,000 with a 10,000 chip ante. Action is on the magician on the Jack Links beef jerky pocket camp. Nine, seven of diamonds. Antonio hopes to one day own a restaurant. It's usually no shirt, no shoes, no service, buddy. <laughs> a raise to 165,000. Ryan Fair folds. 43 players remain in the main event, only one of them without shoes, and only one of them from South Africa. And that is Warren Zaki, owner of a plumbing supply company and the big blind with Queen Nine of Spades. No shame in giving up. Zaki makes the call. And Zaki will take on the shoeless magician. 9-7 versus Queen Nine. The flop is 5-jack-8. Zaki with a queen high gut shot. Esfandiari double gutted, but only the small straight would help him. Zaki checks. Antonio looks like he's thinking about socks. (laughs) He checks as well. Turn card six of spades. Esfandiari hits his nine high straight. Zaki, as you would expect, someone in the plumbing business has a flush draw. (laughs) He checks. Esfandiari now. A bet of 260,000. Zaki with just queen high. He might be calculating his implied odds if his flush or straight hits, in which case he's getting the right price to call. Needs 260000 to call. That's what he does. Actually, Antonio looks like he's thinking about sandals. <laughs> River card is a tray of hearts. Esfandiari with a check mark. Zaki missed his draws. Zaki is going to posture with 400000 Well, he has picked the wrong time to posture, Lon. Antonio's got the stone cold nuts. Baby needs new shoes, and he's about to get some. Antonio puts together a raise to 1.5 million. Well, Zaki gave Antonio a 400,000 chip gift there on the river, and he won't be giving away any more chips. That was it for turn court for me. How many apps did I have? Yeah, torturous turn, a bad river card. Zaki lays it down. Antonio Esfandiari takes the pot. I think Antonio's a, a size nine and a half. Zaki's chip stack is a size smaller now. Well done. Thank you, sir. Every step closer to the final table steals Antonio's resolve to make the November 9. Norman, it's been five years since Antonio Esfandiari won his only World Series bracelet, and as he told us, a lack of focus on his game is what was to blame. But so far in this main event, Antonio has been locked in and looking good. Lon, Antonio hired a life coach, and if I knew it could make that much of a difference, I would have hired one during a previous marriage. A newly focused Asfandiari has put himself in a great spot with his sights set on the biggest final table in poker. Hey, Antonio, any chance I could get your coach's phone number? I know my current wife would appreciate it. Norman, I guess part of the coaching plan was to remain comfortable at all costs. It worked for Tarzan. Early in the main event, friends of Antonio pulled a prank and stole his shoes, gave them to tournament officials saying they belonged to a knocked out player. Here's the top 10 chip counts presented by PokerStars.net. Billy Kopp is the chip leader with over 15 million. Tommy Vitas in second, Darwin Moon in third place. 43 players remain. The chip average is at four and a half million chips. We'll be playing down to 27 in this session. At the outer tables, Phil Ivey with the fourth biggest chip stack still seen at the same table with chip leader Billy Kopp, who just called an all-in from Corrado Montagna. Kopp leads with pocket jacks. Montagna hoping to improve his pocket tens. Montagna, a 31-year-old bartender from Italy. Turn card is a nine. No help to Montagna. Montagna now needs a 10 and a 10 only, or his main event will be over. And the river card is a queen of hearts. Montagna eliminated from the main event by Billy Kopp. Montagna goes out in 43rd place. Billy Cops knocked out a couple of world champions, Eastgate and Hashem, and now he's knocked out a bartender. The bartender wins almost $179,000 as Cop extends his chip lead. Billy's got most of the chips, but eventually, Lon, Phil Ivey will have them all. 
So you're sticking with this wannabe, huh? You want me to switch to Billy Cop? He can't even get out of college. <laughs> All right, let's get over to table two, check in with Jeff Schulman, the only player still alive who's man a main event final table. Jeff finished seventh in 2000. He's seated with Leo Margetz, the only woman left in this year's main event, though she's a little short on chips. Leo looks down at 10 six of hearts. She's only been playing poker for three years. Quite a run here. Margetz folds action on Jeff Duvall, a 60 year old London poker pro. 250. Ace Jack offsuit, a raise to 250,000. Duvall used to play blackjack for a living. This is his 20th World Series of Poker. Jeff Shulman with pocket deuces. Shulman says he used to be a lot more aggressive. He's played close to the vest at this main event. He's going to make this call for a quarter million with the deuces. Jonathan Tamayo in the big blind, a suited king queen. Tamayo with eight caches in the last three World Series. And he will make the call. Now that's a hat I like. <laughs> Three players will see this flop. Flop is ace, deuce, 10. Shulman hits his set. Yahtzee for Shulman. He hits his set, and Duvall hits his ace. Tamayo checks his gut shot straight draw. And now Duvall bets a million with his pair of aces. All in. Shulman re-raises all in. Tamayo retreats quickly. Yeah, cool. Duvall cool. calls all in. Have a set. No. Oh. Very good. Well, Sorry. not very good for Jeff Duvall. He's going to need running oh, cards guess. to stay alive. Yeah, Shulman in good shape to get richer. Any clubs left? Turn card now is a spade. And that's going to be it. Duvall drawing dead and eliminated. Hold on. Duvall luck, goes everyone. out in 42nd place. It's been a pretty smooth ride for Jeff Shulman. And he's a step closer to a return appearance to the main event final table. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Ling's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Ling's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back at the Rio, where the spectators far outnumber the players. 41 players do remain. Among them is seven-time bracelet winner Phil Ivey in a hand with Blair Rodman, a solid bracelet winner from 2007. A pair of fives and a 10-7 on the board. Ivey just bet 300,000. Rodman made seven World Series final tables before he finally won that bracelet on his eighth try. And he's going to make a raise to 700,000 here. Ivy won a bracelet at his second final table in 2000. Now with seven bracelets among his 20 final tables, my man knows how to seal the deal. Ivy makes the call for 400,000 more. These two will see a river card. It's another seven. Check. And they both check. Nine. Ivy says, I got nines. And I guess that's good enough to take the pot. Lot, well, if I were ranking the most awe-inspiring natural sights in the world, number one would be the Grand Canyon at sunset. Number two would be Phil Ivey taking in a pot. Pat and Mel Humphreys, Ivey's number one fans, certainly agree with you. Let's go back to table two and check in on Jeff Shulman and Leo Margetz. Leo, the last woman left in the field. Jeff Shulman looking to get back to the final table. Looks down at Queen Jack off suit. Why is he messing around with Queen Jack off? Two fifth. Those raised to 250,000 on Texas John, 23-year-old Jonathan Tamayo, pocket fives. And he will call. Margetts now. Ace Queen. The dreaded Ace Queen. I'm all in. All in. And Ace Queen's gonna commit all the chips. She had almost 30 big blinds left. To Shulman. And he lays it down. How much more after the 250? Jonathan like Tamayo looking for a count. Wow, might be more than I thought it was. Tamaya sounds a little exasperated. Two million? That's tipping money for you, Jonathan. You have a big stack. Be a man. Uh, or he could be a gentleman and let the lady take the pot. Does Tamayo want to commit the chips with a small pocket pair? Nope, he lays it down. Ah! Everyone stays away from Margetts, and the last woman standing will continue to do so. Happily at that. To me, the objective in my life is to be able to enjoy whatever I do. When I discovered poker, as a player, I mean sitting at a table, I love everything. I started playing like very small tournaments, like locally in Barcelona. And it happened that I won the Spanish University tournament. You know, when you start and you win your first tournament, you think, oh my God, <laughs> I'm good. 
and then you realize you are not good at all. I am aware, like, it's only three years I've been playing and I still need to learn so much. I'm very proud of myself, but it's not enough. <laughs> I think this is everybody's dream and at some point I want to like kick myself to make sure <laughs> this is not a dream. <laughs> Leo only started playing poker because she was out on a date. The guy decided he wanted to go to a poker club. She watched him for a while. She found it pretty boring just to watch, so she took up the game herself. Well, every elimination here gets us closer to the November 9 and also forces some shifting among the tables here at the Rio. Antonio Espondiar is getting a new neighbor at this featured table. Yes. It is Darvin Moon, the logger from Western Maryland. Darvin's quite a story. Never been to Las Vegas before, never played online poker, does not have a credit card, does not have an email address. But he does have over 9 million chips. Hello, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Antonio hoping Darvin is more of an ATM here than a big stack bully. Action on Eugene Kachalov, born in the Ukraine, lives in New York. Ace 10. He's a partner in a hedge fund with six caches at this World Series. He's all in. All in. Just over a million. Action on Darvin Moon, still organizing his nine million chips, which are blocking the pocket cam, I guess. Raise. When I come to a new table, as a rule, I don't like to raise until I've removed all the chips from my racks. I guess that wouldn't take long. Five million. Five wow, million. a re-raise to five million. I'd say it's a big raise. That's more than half of Darvin's big stack. <laughs> Action on Esfan Diari with pocket jacks. Big hand. How much did you make it, sir? Five million. Why did you make it so much? Because he could. I'm new at this game. I over-raise, I under-raise. I'm not sure. Sounds like a wolf in sheep's clothing to me. You like your hand that much? To be honest with you, I just glanced at it, so I'm not really sure on that either. <laughs> he just glanced at it? That's funny. Antonio with a big decision for most of his chips here. Antonio probably knows little about this big stacked amateur, and he lays down the jacks and will avoid the unknown entity that is Darvin Moon. So catch a love at risk with Ace-10. Darvin shows pocket kings. <laughs> Antonio dodged a bullet, maybe a cannonball. Well, the magician with a good read on that one probably saved his tournament. As it stands, Moon has Kachalov at risk and in trouble. Here's the flop now. 8-6-10, Moon still best with his kings. Kachalov caught a 10. Kachalov still needs more help. It is a deuce, that is no help. Eugene Kachalov will need an ace or a 10, or he is wamboozled. River card is another king, and so a set for Darvin Moon eliminates Eugene Kachalov in 39th place. The name is Darvin Moon. Nice answer. Thank you. Just come right in. Darvin has left a lasting impression at every table he's been at, and now Esfandiari witnesses firsthand the power of the Moon Man. Back inside the Rio, where our tournament update shows University of Kentucky student Billy Cop still leading the pack. We are playing down to the final 27 tonight, and we could get two people closer to that number right now. No, I have, I have kings. And with those kings, Joseph Ward could score a double knockout. Martin Lapastol is at risk with pocket queens, and Gabriel Vizina is all in with pocket jacks. Way to go, dealer. The 27-year-old Massachusetts pro trying to knock off two Canadians at once. What did they ever do to us? Here's the flop. It's for King Nine, a set of kings for Ward, and that six million chip pot is almost his. Ward liked it pre-flop, and now he's got to love it post-flop. Vazina and Lapistole now drawing very thin. At least they can share a cab together. <laughs> Turn card now. Is a six, and that will end it. Vazina and Lapistole drawing dead. Ward wins a huge pot. They'll exit together. And with their winnings, they, they should take a car service, not a cab. <laughs> and with that big pot, Joseph Ward now approaching 10 million chips. Did you like it? That's a nice flop. Make things over right away. And Ward vaults himself into the top five. Back to table two where Leo Margetz is sitting. She's a marathon runner, but Norman, I don't know if she's ever been in a race quite like this. She's sitting with Jeff Schulman looking to get back to the main event final table. But they've been joined by the chip leader, Billy Kopp. Their table mate Eric Buckman just shoved all in pre-flop with pocket eights for two million and change. Jonathan Tamayo 
We'll call him with Pocket Kings. You have a pair? Yes, Kings. Yeah, you're good. Good hand. Very good. Tamayo has Buckman crushed. The 23-year-old pro about to move up the leaderboard. The 29-year-old Buckman about to make his main event exit. Here's the flop. Seven, nine, deuce. Tamayo is still best with the two kings. But Tamayo doesn't even want to see any card in the neighborhood of an eight. Turn card now. Buckman looking to hang on. That's a six, and Buckman with an up and down straight draw now. Tamayo suddenly a little queasy. Yeah, what a card for Buckman. He needs an eight for a set, or now a five or a ten to make a straight. Otherwise, he's gone. The river card. Oh, it is the ten. He rivered the straight. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's just what Jonathan Tamayo's thinking, maybe with a few extra words to spice it up. Tamayo takes that bad beat in stride. And Buckman takes 4.2 million chips to stick around. Still below chip average, but he's alive. All right, let's go back to the feature table. Action already underway. Newcomer at this table, Darwin Moon was dealt aces and then flopped a set. He now has the check mark. His opponent, Ian Tavelli, missed his straight draw and is faced with a 1 million chip bet on the river. Moon re-raised Tavelli pre-flop, then was checked yeah. to the river. Tavelli will lay it down to Darwin Moon, who will take another pot here. Last time I'm showing him. He's going to show him the aces. Darwin likes to show his cards when he's not called. Kings, aces, wee, action. It's been like at the whole tournament. I mean, it's just been incredible. That's a good thing. Keep it up, buddy. One thing's for sure, this game's a lot easier than Darwin's day job. I own a logging business. My part of the job is buying the timber, cutting the tree down. I'm too fat to climb a tree. I stay on the ground. I'm not going up a tree. That's for squirrels. It's brutal physical work. When limbs come flying at you and hit you, and my leg, I got scars all over it where a tree kicked back and tore my leg. Great. I mean, it's just like playing courts. You got to be on top of your game. You make one mistake and you're gone. I'm like a fish out of water out here in all this. Sitting here at the World Series of Poker is the most intense thing I've ever done in my life. Back home, we're playing for $200. Here, we're playing for the big stack. I won't have to worry about money if I win it, but my lifestyle's not going to change. If I leave out of here, I'll be back in the woods with a chainsaw. That's, that's my life. The closest NFL team to his home in Western Maryland is the Pittsburgh Steelers, but Darvin says he likes to root for the underdog. That's why he latched on to the historically hideous Saints. All right, let's keep it here at the feature table. Action on 27-year-old Floridian Ryan Fair, a dental school dropout. Ace Jack off suit. Fair wears a Gators jersey because he's from Florida, so he has no choice. A raise to 200000 from Ryan Fair. Action falls to James Aikenhead from England. Nine and a six into the muck. If Aiken hits from England, he should be wearing, I don't know, a fish and chips necklace. <laughs> With malt vinegar cologne. Yeah. I'm from Maryland. I have terrapin underwear. <laughs> Darwin Moon. With five four of spades on the button. Darwin started playing Hold'em just three years ago because he says he and his friends got too old to play softball. <laughs> oh, boy. I know the feeling. And he will call for 200000 And it's like Doyle Brunson says, you don't get too old to play poker. You get too old when you don't play poker. McLaughlin lays it down in the small blind. Jack eight, offsuit for Esfon Diari in the big blind into the muck. So Fair and Moon heads up. And here's the flop. It is ace, deuce four. Fair hits top pair. Darvin Moon, middle pair with a gut shot. Fair checks. Moon needs a tray for a straight. He checks. They both checked one. Thank you. Turn card now. Queen of spades. Fair still good. Fair's body jerked a little. He's going to bet. I know when someone's going to bet line. <laughs> he does bet about half the pot. 300,000. Call. Darwin Moon's still looking for help, call. but he'll make the call. I knew Darwin was going to call when he said call. <laughs> All right, so they'll both see a river cart. Fair ahead, but not now. Moon hits two pair and gets the check mark. He's running good. Fair's going to bet again. Oh, he faked you out. He checks. That was a check swing. That wasn't even a check swing. He went around. Darvin bets 650000 I call. And a quick call from Fair. He won't like that. Darvin shows the two pair. So sick. Four final spades for two pair. So sick. Good end. 
You know, right now, if, if you drop Darwin out of a helicopter from 15,000 feet, I believe he would land on his feet. <laughs> Welcome to the table, sir. No matter what he's dealt, the logger from Western Maryland is chopping down anyone who stands in his way. Day seven of the main event continues here at the Rio with 36 players left. The leaderboard still shows Billy Cop at the top. Bill Ivey has moved into second place. Darvin Moon in fifth now. Out in the field, currently in 10th place, former Bear Stearns executive Steve Beglider debating an all-in call against Chris Bach. Bach flopped top pair and shoved his last one and a half million chips. Beglider with an open-ended straight draw. Beglider not getting quite the right price to call here. Right call. But he does call. Chris Bach at risk, but he's ahead right now. Bach more than a two to one favorite, but he hates to see that call. I need a seven or a queen to make a straight. Turn card now is a deuce. Bach still ahead with his pair of tens. And Beglider still looking for a seven or a queen to knock off Chris Bach. River card is the seven. Beglider hits his jack high straight, and that will eliminate Chris Bach. Beglider spent 24 years at Bear Stearns. That seven on the river was probably the best bailout he's seen all year. Bach earns almost $254,000. Got a gamble. Well, that gamble paid off for Beglider, and he now sits with over 9 million chips. All right, let's move across the room where Phil Ivey is at a new table and playing trip sevens after the turn, going up against Joseph Ward and his pocket kings. Ivey in the big blind called Ward's pre-flop raise, then they checked the flop. Ivy reaching for chips here on the turn. Bets 350,000. Ward, a solid player, finished 218th in last year's main event. He's got position on Ivy, but do you ever really have position on Phil Ivy? <laughs> I don't think you do. Ward, with those pocket kings, will make the call. And Ivy again bets the right amount at the right time and gets the call. River card now. Four of diamonds. Ivy with a full house, sevens full, earns the check mark. Let's see if Ivy can get Joseph Ward to pay him off. Ivy, figuring just the right amount, okay. is 850000 a call, and Ward can't like that. Yeah. Ward, mad at himself, gave up almost a million and a half chips in that hand to Phil Ivy. Yeah, you have to figure Ward thought he had Ivy the whole way. Luckily, he didn't get too crazy with the Kings, but Ivy does take that three million chip pot. Lon, what Phil Ivey is doing right now is amazing. Today's fields are bigger. The overall quality is better. He's already won two bracelets this year, giving him seven overall, and now he's making a serious run at the big one. And there is the bracelet that Ivey and everyone left is desperately trying to win. Action begins here on Darvin Moon. Moon in the small blind on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Camp. Darvin with an ace, of course, and a queen. Darvin says, when I get him, I bet. When I don't, I fold. And he's been getting them. And he is betting. Not too much. It's blind versus blind, and Antonio wants to keep his costs down. The raise is the 340000 Antonio with a suited King Jack. Why so much? Antonio might want to think about getting a line of T-shirts with the Why So Much logo. It's a little more than four times the big blind, and Esfandiari makes the call. Here's the flop. It is Queen, Trey, Trey. Queen's up for Darvin Moon. Darvin keeps telling folks he's running good, and he keeps proving it. But he checks this time. Antonio looking to get a read on the mysterious logger. So far, few have. Antonio missed the flop, but will bet here 480000 Can't blame Antonio for taking a stab at this pot here. Raise. A check raise from Darvin Moon. When I got him, I bet. When I don't, I fold. He's got him again. Raised to a little more than 1.1 million. Antonio took his shot. It's time to shut it down. So how much is it to me? I think it's time to shut it down. <laughs> he does need 645,000 to make the call. Darvin sits placidly. Raise. Antonio is going to muscle up and try to buy the pot. Over two million back to Darvin. Antonio's made a big misread here. I don't think he's going to push Darvin off his hand. Pot now at four million. I'm all in. 
All in, All in from Darvin All in. Moon. That will shut it down for Antonio. He does fall, and Darvin Moon takes a big chunk from Esfandiari. From out of the woods and into the thick of it here at the main event, Darvin Moon is rolling. Antonio tried, but Darvin was holding the goods. Nice hand. Thank you. Antonio feels the sting of the moon, man. Welcome to Darwin's world. Hit the flop, bet big, stack winnings. And what a treasure of winnings he has. Darwin Moon with more than 10 million chips. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, 40th Annual Memory. Moneymaker has done a lot more for the World Series of Poker than any other single human being. It's a five. Yeah. The year he won it, that's the year that the lid blew off a of poker. To go from 839 players in 2003 to 6,000-something last year is, in that short a time period, is so incredible. This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. Everybody likes to root for the underdog. If it wasn't for the average Joe accountant, Chris Moneymaker, winning the World Series, heck, we'd all be doing something else right now. And of course, all of this might not have happened if Chris Moneymaker hadn't sucked out on the river and knocked Phil Ivey out in 10th place on his way to the 03 title. Ivey has still never made it to a main event final table, but he just looks to be in a very good place. He's tangling again with Joseph Ward. Ivy checked the turn, which paired the board. And now Ward's coming out with chips, 200,000. But well, once again, Ward raised pre-flop, and Ivy called him out of the big blind. And Ivy with a re-raise here to 600,000. And Ward now thinking there's got to be a better way to make a living than getting check raised by Phil Ivy. New table, please. <laughs> Ward has the 400,000 in hand and now commits them to the pot. They both might have a hand. One of them might be on a draw. River card now is an eight of clubs, a straight draw on board. This year, Ivy says he has stayed focused. He says, I recognize that every pot does matter. He used to get impatient in tournaments. Ivy putting together 10 lavender chips. That equals one million. Ivy betting a little more than half the pot. Ward's going to give this some thought. He just got stung by Ivy a short time ago. Yeah, Joseph Ward trying to piece the puzzle together. Oh. He makes the call. Ivy shows trip nines. Ward surrenders. And this time, Ward ships about 2 million chips over to Phil Ivy. Phil Ivy over 13 million in the 09 main event. Meanwhile, Ryan Fair was Whoa. just moved to table two. His seat's not even warm yet, but he may be on his way out the Ace. door. Let's do it again. He's all in with Ace King against the pocket kings of Jeff Shulman. 5.3 million chips at stake. Ace. Ryan Fair cracked Hung Fam's pocket kings earlier on day seven to stay alive. He's looking for a repeat bad beat. Ace. The flop is queen five queen. Club. Shulman with kings up. Not too much in there for Ryan Fair to like. Give me a sweat. Turn card is another King Kings full will in the hand. Good hand. And the main Good event for Ryan Good Fair. Good luck. Thank you. He goes out in 31st place. And for Jeff Shulman, it's just been steady as she goes, whoever she may be. A new chip has been introduced into the game, the beige chip worth 250000 apiece. And at our featured table, Darvin Moon already has started stacking some. Darvin says there were 6,300 people at this main event who play better than he does. He just has to be 29 more. Have we not won the tournament already? Just look how many chips he has. It's unreal. I mean, that's the way it's been. The guy kept shoving in on me day two or day three, and finally I just called him with queens. He had aces, I flopped quads. I mean, you know, it's just, if I ever have to play, I mean, you guys, you guys are so far ahead of me. I mean, if I have to play cards. It doesn't look that way. You're killing us. How hard is it to play? Pocket aces, flop trips, pocket kings, river trips. I mean, yeah. Darvin has been running like he's been dealt nothing but wild cards, which segues nicely into our Jack Link's Beef Jerky wild card hand. Go get him, Mr. Chad. To be honest, there are probably 6,300 people in my own family who could figure out the wild card hand better than me. <laughs> Action on young Joe Cotta. Ace, six of spades for the 21-year-old. He's primarily a heads-up online cash player. Quite a specialist. Beat just one player at a time. He raised it to 250000 on Darvin Moon now. Darvin looks down at a jack of diamonds. 
Ace of diamonds. That's a weak hand for Darvin. Darvin's not going anywhere with that. Just a call. Espan Diari with the wild card hand. All in. Moves all, all in, in for almost two million. I've got an advantage here. I know two aces are gone, so I assume Antonio doesn't have one. With a raise in front of him and staring at Darvin's big stack, mm. Antonio has pocket queens, maybe kings. You want him back, don't you? Very badly. Antonio trying to sell him on a call. It's not nice to take and not give back. Darvin wondering, what would Antonio risk his tournament on here? The answer is a big pocket pair. How much was it? One point. Is the amateur going to call? No shame in giving up. The front of Antonio's t-shirt should say, why so much? No shame. And the back would say, no shame in giving up. <laughs> I'll give it up. Darvin Moon lays it down. Darvin playing it tight, and he shows the suited ace jack. Antonio finally gets Darvin Moon to blink, and he had ace jack the same hand. I'm wrong again, and proud of it, Lon. Antonio Esfandiari takes the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Good lay down, sir. For me or for you? Both. Only a partial eclipse of Moon, but Antonio will take it. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. One more down. See you next year. Out goes Luis Nargentino. He finishes 29th. The day will end at 27. And by the way, there's a $100,000 difference between 28th and 27th. As you see on the tournament update, Billy Kopp remains in the lead with more than double the chip average. Let's check in on Kopp over at table two. Like Darvin Moon, the deck has been hitting Billy Kopp. Known as Patrolman 35 online. He looks down at Queen 10 of spades. Cop is another moneymaker effect poker boomer. Billy and his high school basketball buddy started playing poker before practice. Cop raised it to a quarter million. Jeff Schulman did not play those cards. Now on Jonathan Tamayo in the small blind, ace king of diamonds. Wow, Billy Cop is studying hospitality management at the University of Kentucky. Tamayo has a bachelor's in hospitality management from Cornell. I believe this is a main event first. Wow, this could be a very cordial flop. Uh, what are the odds? Margetts in the big blind, 10-5. She's been quiet today and she'll muck this. So heads up, Cop and Tamayo. Well, she couldn't play. She doesn't know a thing about hospitality management. <laughs> the flop, Jack, queen, queen. Cop hits trip queens. Tamayo picked up a straight draw. I just ran it in the computer. The odds of two hospitality management guys going heads up on day seven of the main event are one in 23.2 billion. <laughs> Tamayo checked. Cop comes out with 450,000 with his trips. Billion. Who'd have figured? I just did. <laughs> Tamayo will make the call. Well, if I were Tamayo, I'd see one more card too. But if he hits a 10 for his straight, that would actually give Cop a full house. Turn card is a four. Tamayo drawing dead. Cop with a check mark. What is hospitality management? Tamayo checks. Now Cop with a monster hand. Makes it one million to stick around. Jonathan Tamayo now. Tamayo doesn't want to give it up yet. Likes that ace king. And he will make the call. That is a very hospitable call. I guess Tamayo is either calling to bluff the river or he thinks Billy Cop is betting with Squad Douche. And Cop thinking, thank you very much. All right, the river card now. Cop already with the check mark. It's a seven of clubs. Has the check mark ever come off a player's name line? No, it never has. Well, maybe a mistake, a miscalculation. Cop will keep that check mark. Tamayo checks 2.6 million now from Billy Cop. I call. Wow, what a misstep from Tamayo, and what a big pot when one of the players didn't even have a hand. Tamayo thought his ace-king was best far from it. Cop takes that huge pot. Jonathan Tamayo with a costly, costly misread. He lost more than half his stack calling with ace high. And Billy Cop, the chip leader, extends his chip lead. It'll take a while to stack those. All right, let's take a look at our chip leaders. Billy Kopp with almost 19 million. Phil Ivey in second place with almost 15 million. Some notable players below the chip average include Tamayo now, Leo Margetz, and Antonio Esfandiari with just about two and a half million chips. He's still at our featured table. Darvin Moon is in third place with 12 million. Esfandiari with a lot of makeup work to do here on day seven. 
right, action folds over to Joe Cotta, a 21-year-old, under the gun, plus one. King five of spades. This was his first World Series, and with this main event, he's cashed three times. He's going to raise it to 250000 Francois Balmagere with pocket tens. The poker coach, one of three French players among the final 28, along with Ludovic Lequet and Antoine Saoud. Balmagere calls for 250000 Day seven will end with one more elimination. Action on Darvin Moon, ace jack offsuit. Darvin Moon, the only logger from Western Maryland left in the field. He calls for 250000 The small blind, Esfan Diari. Folds queen seven. Antonio's got to be the only barefoot magician left. I would imagine so. Three players to the flop. It is ten, queen, king. Kata is third best with top pair. Balmajer with a set of tens. Moon says hello, Broadway. <laughs> if gaming laws allowed it, I would grab Darvin Moon from the table right now, take him over to the roulette wheel, and put my life savings on any number he wants. <laughs> After Kata checked, Balmajer bet 550000 Moon now with that ace high straight, just with a call. Darvin's getting hands and not screwing him up. Kata gets out of the way. Disciplined laydown from Joe Kata. Heads up to the turn. It's a deuce of hearts. Moon with the four to one advantage. Balmagere loves his set. Bets just over one million. Balmagere bets half the pot, hoping Darvin calls. Yeah, he's got to believe the set is golden. Praise. This table has heard that before. I don't think Francois Balmagere wanted to hear the big stack go raise. A raise to 2.2 million. I assume Balmagere was hoping Darvin had ace-king or ace-queen. Now he's got to worry that Darvin flopped a bigger set or a straight. Balmagere will commit those chips to make the call. Darvin's the one looking a little anxious with the sweaty palms. River card is a five of diamonds. Darvin with the check mark. He's got the ace-high straight. Balmagere looks a little flamouched. He slows down and checks. Darvin, that's two million. You want value? I'm gonna give you value, Darvin says. He's telling Francois just two million to win a pot of eight and a half million. Now suddenly it looks like it's dawning on Balmagere that he might be beat. That's really sick. I believe Balmagere's gotta pay him off. Then again, it is for most of his remaining chips. It's a tough decision. I mean, here's another player perplexed by Darvin Moon with most of his chips at stake. What will Balmagere do? Yeah, I might look like a fool, but I don't know. Wow, a tough and disciplined lay down from Balmagere. Yeah, darn good fault. And Darvin Moon with his straight takes another stack of chips. Darvin doesn't show this time. Good lay down. Good lay down. I had a very good end, you know. I had the nuts. Flop yeah. the nuts. Darvin doesn't show, but he tells. <laughs> no. You sit on TV, you say he's an honest man. Yeah, I guess. An honest man with more than 15 million chips and counting and eyes on the final table. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros. Back at the Rio, Steve Begleiter might be our 28th place finisher all in with ace queen against the kings of Tommy Vitas. Vitas had four bet it and Begleiter went all in with ace queen and 50 big blinds left. The flop is no help to Begleiter. We have seen Begleiter with a lot of gamble in him. Turn card now. Oh, is the yeah! ace and that's the card Begleiter was looking for. It looks like Begleiter's gamble will pay off. Vitas now will need a river king to knock him out. River card now. Is the queen and aces up is enough for Beglider to stay alive and win that enormous pot. Amazing, Beglider makes a questionable play and is all but out of here, but turns an ace and is now among the chip leaders. Beglider in fourth place, Vetus takes a big hit to his chip stack. So here are the top five in the room. Billy Cop ran into some trouble at table two, so Darvin Moon is the chip leader. The bottom five stacks include Antonio Esfandiari at the featured table and Leo Margetz, the short stack in the room at table two with some dangerous company around here, Jeff Shulman and Billy Cop. Cop in second place right now, but still with 14 and a half million chips. He will not play this hand. Action on Eric Buckman. Buckman with two red fours. 
Buckman was one card from going home. Remember, he rivered a straight to crack Jonathan Tamayo's pocket kings. Buckman raises to 275,000. Shulman falls over to Leo Margetz. Ace Jack off suit. I'm all in. And all in again for almost 2 million is Margetz. How much more is it? You may recall Margetz went all in with Ace Queen for about 2 million earlier against Jonathan Tamayo, and he laid down pocket fives. And Buckman right now doesn't have as many chips as Tamayo had earlier. Buckman would need about a third of his chip stack to make this call. I can afford to make the call, but... So I can afford it, but I'm not so sure. The last woman left hopes the man is chivalrous here. You know what? You got too many chips. We can't double you up with this hand. Buckman says it's too much to risk and he'll lay it down. Well, like earlier, Leo has to be thrilled she wasn't called in that spot. Margett's happy to have life, if only with a few more chips. Yeah, another pretty lady leaves another fellow mumbling. <laughs> Leo Margett's dream of being the second woman to make a main event final table is still alive. Back to our featured table with the reduced field. They're playing seven-handed here. Action will be on Ian Tavelli, one of four players left who could be the youngest main event champ ever. He will fold. We still need a dress code here. See the French guy down there? I don't mind stripes if it's a pinstripe jacket. He knows how to dress. Francois Balmagier from France with pocket jacks. Ooh, the Alain McCarran Memorial hand could oh. be Francois Balmagier's last. Just say no to pocket jacks. He is going to play with those jacks. A quarter million. He raises from the cutoff. Darvin Moon, 10 deuce, out of the way. Antonio Esfandiari says, hello, aces. 150. 150 for him, the call from the big blind. But Antonio putting together a re-raise to 700,000. When you are short stacked, pocket aces are an incomparable sight. Malmajer with pocket jacks. I'm on in. And he will shove. Cool. And that's just what Antonio was looking for. Antonio Esfandiari with a chance for a double up here. A great spot for Antonio. It could be worse for Francois. At least he's got Esfandiari covered. <laughs> Antonio says, I can't watch from here. He's going to the bleachers to hang out with his dad and uncle. I, I believe you should have to stay at the table. So Balmagier looking to dish out the bad beat and end day seven. That does look like a comfortable seat. <laughs> the flop is tray 7-5. Antonio's still best. Antonio watches his fate on the overhead screen. And now the turn card. Another seven, Antonio needs to dodge just one more card for the double up. Balmagier can only send Antonio Esfandiari home with a jack on the river. The river card now is a six. Esfandiari with a double up. Elation and dejection. He's a barefoot wonder. <laughs> So Antonio doubles up and avoids elimination. Back in the field, Joseph Ward is trying to do the same thing. Ward is all in, but a three to one favorite with his ace king dominating the ace queen of Jamie Robbins. Robbins, a financial trader turned poker pro. Now the all important flop. Eight, 10, ace, and ace for both. Ward leads with his top kicker. Ward battered by Phil Ivey in a couple of hands earlier, in good shape to double up. Turn card now is a deuce. Ward still way ahead. And Ward in great shape now to double up against Jamie Robbins. Anything but a queen? Only a queen would knock out Joseph Ward. And the river card. Oh, it's the queen! That's it. Robin queen spikes queen aces ball. up to win the pot. Joseph Ward gone in 28th place. A brutal three-outer ends Joseph Ward's main event. And that ends day seven with Ward's payday of $254,000. We are down to 27. A jubilant 27. Final 27, baby. 
final 27 is indeed now set, and it includes one woman looking to make history, one man looking to make his second trip to this final table, and the greatest player in the world who is still hoping to get there for the first time. As for the rest of the field, the moon may be rising. It's unreal. But the magician may still have a few tricks up his sleeve. This is the main event, and we're almost there. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. We'll see you next time from the World Series of Poker.